Hey, good morning. This is Dr. Reveles, and I'm going to show you in this video how to do an analysis of experimental values of heat capacities and then using a fit, degree polynomial fit, and analyze the uh, model and how well our model is reproducing the experiments. So let's read the instructions. You will often quick, need quick models that enable you to approximate values using the end propane data shown below. Do the following. Number one, plot heat capacity versus temperature values, heat capacity on the y-axis. Okay, see how I already know that. So X is going to be the temperature, Y is the heat capacity. I found students uh, mixing this and of course getting the incorrect graphs. So always please label which one is your X, which one is your Y. So following the instructions, I'm going to uh, select data and I am going to add my data. X values is temperature, Y values heat capacities. And that provides my graph. That's the first uh, the first point they were asking. Now, second point, use the trend line function to find a fifth degree polynomial fit. That's we want to find a model that reproduces these experimental values. So right click, add trend line, polynomial degree five, display equation, display R square, and that's our model. This is our model. And we can see the model is real good. Uh, we have an R square, very close to one is 0.995. Okay, so now I want to copy these numbers uh, because the step three is provide the five coefficients of this equation on the given table where A5 is the coefficient for the X to the fifth power. So I'm going to start copying here the numbers that will be minus nine, e to the minus 14. So this is the first coefficient here. Then four, e to the minus 10. See, these are very small numbers. Then minus seven, e to the minus seven. When I type e is, uh, the, I'm writing here minus seven times 10 to the power minus seven. This is uh, just a shortcut notation. You can use also in your calculators. Then I have 0 0.0005. And then 0 0.0592. And finally, 32.595. Okay, now I'm going to use this equation, the model to calculate the forecast values. So that will be equals, copying the equation, the fifth coefficient times x to the fifth power. The coefficient doesn't change. I'm going to keep that constant here, adding the dollar sign. Plus the fourth coefficient times x to the power four times the third coefficient plus the third coefficient times x when it's g3 to the power third plus the second coefficient times x to the power two times plus the first coefficient times x plus the zero coefficient that will give me my forecast for that given temperature. Remember, you only need to write it once correctly and just copy the formula. Uh, the coefficients are not changing. What are changing is just the X values. Okay, so I'm going to copy here, double click here and then copy the formula here down. So now I have the forecast. And I, I can use that estimate uh, where point, point three, um, use the point four, use the fit to estimate the CP at 520. I really just need to add one more value here, 520 to calculate my estimate not to reduce the number of fonts. So that will be my answer here. I got just two digits. Okay, uh, copy just the value, otherwise it copy the formula. Okay, so we are now on step five. Create a residual plot for the data. What does the residual indicate about the feed? How about the R square? Okay, we know already that our model is real good. This R square is very close to 1.99. 
So the residual is going to take the difference between the exact value, which is our CP, this column minus the forecast. See, again, I label the column so I know what I'm doing. So it'll be exact minus forecast. And I copy down here these values. And I see that uh, I'm going to plot here in this in this chart these residuals for the given temperatures. What are the residuals? Uh, let's see, just let me select data just to show you. So the X values are the temperature again, and the Y values I'm calculating, I'm plotting what are the residuals. Okay. Uh, something looks looks strange here. Uh, remember we said our model is, is really good. However, the residuals tend to be very large when we go to higher temperatures. And the reason for that is really because our model, even though it's real good, uh, we are not taking the full model. What I'm saying is that the, uh, the digits I'm considering here, uh, I'm not considering all the digits I should be. So let's here double click here, and I'm going to change the number to scientific, and I'm going to add three digits, three decimal places. So what I'm making is, uh, Ask the program to display an equation with more, more digits so I can copy better uh, the, those coefficients for the model. So you see for the first the first one is minus 9.49. Let's copy the numbers here. Minus 9.49 e to the minus 14. And we'll see how our uh, model starts improving as we get a, a copy more of these digits. This will be four, 0.314 e to the minus 10. 0.314. Okay, let, let me add all so we can see that we are copying all these. 4.314 e to the minus 10. The next one is minus 7.262 e to the minus 7. The next one is not 5, it's actually. 4.765 e to the minus four. Again, see how, how the residuals now are getting smaller. Uh, yes, let's keep going. And then the next one is 5.924 e, let's see, e to the minus two. And the last one, 32.59. Okay, that I think that's that's correct. That's, uh, let's just copy for the sake of I'm just copying the numbers here. 259 e to the power one. Okay, so we'll say that we already have a good model, but our forecast was not very accurate for higher temperatures because when we uh, calculated uh, based on the equation, we are not taking all the digits. Of course, uh, that's important. We we'll say at least three take uh, here, we're taking uh, three digits, uh, three decimal places. So have the residual, we plot here the residual and our conclusion will be, okay, uh, how, what do the residuals indicate about the fit? And then we'll, when I, here I can copy our explanation, that will be the last part. And of the explanation. Okay, what we are observing here is the residuals are randomly distributed around zero, which shows the model correctly reproduced experimental data, which is what we know already from the R square, but we want to really show here on the residual graph. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.